Welcome to class 8 Geography. Lesson 1. Rocks and Soils. In lawyer classes, we have studied about four realms of the earth, namely lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere. Lithosphere is the uppermost and significant layer of the earth. It is composed of solid rocks and unconsolidated materials. The literal meaning of lithosphere is the sphere of rock. The four spheres of the earth you can see in this picture. See, the lithosphere extends not only on the continent or on the land surface, it also extends in the water bodies or in the ocean. What is lithosphere? The crust and the upper layer of the mantle together make up a zone of rigid, brittle rock called lithosphere. The lithosphere is a solid rock that covers the planet. This includes the crust as well as the very uppermost part of the mantle, which is solid rock. All of the rock on earth, from the mountains to the sea floor, is included in this lithosphere. Petrology is a branch of geology that deals with the study of rocks. Petrology is derived from the Greek word. Petrus refers to the rock and logos means study. What are rocks? Actually, the rocks are made up of minerals. The rocks may be made up of one mineral or the rocks may be a combination of different minerals. Rocks may be hard or soft. Rocks may be porous or impermeable. Rocks may be rough or soft. So what are rocks? The rocks are the solid mineral materials forming a part of the surface of the earth and other similar planets. The earth's crust, that is lithosphere, is composed of rocks. A rock is an aggregate of one or more minerals. And rock is an important natural resource and is found in solid state. It may be hard or soft in nature. An estimation reveals that there are 2,000 different types of minerals found on the surface, of which only 12 are the basic minerals commonly found all over the earth. Minerals are chemical substances which exist in nature. They may occur either in the form of elements or compounds. Classification of rocks. Actually, the rocks are classified on the basis of their origin, that is, how they are formed. The three major types of rocks are Igneous rocks, which is formed from the cooling of molten rock, that is magma or lava. Sedimentary rock, it forms when particles of other rocks or the remains of plants and animals are pressed and cemented together. Metamorphic rock, it is formed when an existing rock is changed by heat and or pressure. These are the three major classifications. Igneous, igneous is again subdivided into inclusive and igneous extrusive, which we will say later. Sedimentary rock, organic and inorganic, and metamorphic rock is classified as thermal and dynamic. And this picture gives you some examples of different types of rocks. Igneous rocks. The igneous rocks are formed by solidification of molten magma. These rocks are also called as primary rocks or parent rocks, as all other rocks are formed from these rocks because these igneous rocks were the first rocks to form on our earth. The word igneous is derived from the Latin word ignis, which means fire. And the characteristics of igneous rocks are, these rocks are hard in nature. These are impermeable. What is impermeable? They are not porous. They do not absorb water. They do not contain fossils. They are associated with volcanic activities. And these rocks are useful for construction works. And the two major types of igneous rocks are extrusive igneous rocks and intrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive means forming inside the or beneath the surface of the earth. Extrusive means the rocks forming above the surface of the earth, outside. Extrusive igneous rocks. Extrusive igneous rocks. These are formed when lava cools quickly on the surface. And the fine grained textures are commonly seen in these extrusive igneous rocks because it cools down very quickly and the crystals have little time to cool. Porphyrics, that means a large crystals formed at a depth prior to emplacement on surface. You can see here. Lava is actually a fiery red molten magma comes out from the interior of the earth on its surface. After reaching the earth's surface, the molten materials get solidified and form rocks. Rocks formed in such a way on the crust are called extrusive igneous rocks. So the rocks form 
on the crust or on the surface of the earth are called as extrusive. These rocks are finely grained and glassy in nature due to rapid solidification. Basalt found in northwestern part of peninsular India is the best example for this type of rock. An intrusive igneous rock. It is formed when magma inside the volcano cools slowly and forms a large grain crystals are seen in this intrusive igneous rock. It is visible here. See in this picture you can see the large grains. Intrusive igneous rocks are of two types. The deep-seated rocks. The first one is deep-seated rocks. The deep-seated rocks are also called as plutonic rocks. They are the ones formed at shallow depths. Others are called happy basalt rocks. So the two types of igneous rocks are the intrusive igneous rocks are deep-seated rocks and hyperbasal rocks. And deep-seated rocks are also called as plutonic rocks. Since intrusive igneous rocks consist of large crystals, they are also called as crystalline rocks. What is this plutonic rock? These rocks crystallize from magma in the interior of the crust because they are intrusive, which are later exposed. And the magma is insulated and cools slowly, allowing large crystals to form. Most common plutonic rocks are from granite family. The hyperbasal rock is they are the intermediate, they are at the intermediate depth at about two kilometers. They exhibit mixed characteristics of volcanic and plutonic rocks. The example is porphyries. These are the pictures of major active volcanoes of the world: Mount Vesuvius, Mount Stromboli, and Mount Etna in Italy, Mauna Lava and Mauna Kea in Hawaii Island. Actually, this Mount Stromboli, it is in Mediterranean Sea. Since it erupts very often, it is also called as Lighthouse of Mediterranean Sea. Next, we are going to see about sedimentary rocks. The word sedimentary has been derived from Latin word sedimentum, means settling down. It is formed by the sediments derived and deposited by various agents. Due to high temperature and pressure, the undisturbed sediments of long cemented to form sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks consist of many layers. That is why they are also called as strata rock or stratified rocks, which were formed by the sediments deposited at different periods. As it consists of many strata, which means layers, it is also known as stratified rocks. These are the four steps involved in the formation of sedimentary rocks. The eroded sediments end up in the water and begin to settle down. And with time, more layers pile up and pressure down the lower layers. They pile on upon another. More layers or stratas and further compaction forces out water of the layers. Salt crystals glue the layers together which is called as cementation and thus the rock moss is formed which is called as sedimentary rock. So the five step processes are weathering. What is weathering? The existing rock is broken down into different sediments. Erosion. Sediments are carried away to a new location. Deposition. Sediments are laid down in a new location, building up different layers and then compaction. Sediments are pressed together by the weight of a new sediment on the top. And then finally, the gluing part, cementation. Sediments are glued together by a chemical reaction. Even coal is a type of sedimentary rocks. Before the dinosaurs, many giant plants dried in swamps. Over millions of years, the plants were buried under water and dirt. Heat and pressure turn the dead plants into coal. Now the characteristics of sedimentary rocks. They have many layers. See all the layers are finely visible here in this picture. They are non-crystalline. Whereas the igneous rocks are crystalline and the sedimentary rocks are non-crystalline. They contain fossils. You can see the fossils. They are soft and get eroded easily. What are fossils? Fossils are the remains or marks of plants and animals that lived a very long time ago. They are usually found in rock and stone. Fossils are important because they tell us a story about things that lived on the earth before us. You can see the fossils in these rocks. See different types of fossils are seen here. And the scientists who study fossils are called as paleontologists. Sedimentary rock must be formed in four important steps. Erosion, deposition, compaction, that is packing together the sediments and cementation, 
that is glued together. And the oldest sedimentary rock of the world has been identified in Greenland, which is about 3.9 billion years old. Amazing. The types of sedimentary rocks, organic sedimentary rocks, mechanical sedimentary rocks, and chemical sedimentary rocks. And organic sedimentary rocks are formed as a result of decomposition of dead plants and animals. It contains fossils, the example, chalk, chalk, dolomite, and limestone rocks. And mechanical sedimentary rocks, they are formed from the disintegration of igneous and metamorphic rocks. The natural agents erode these and transport these rocks and deposit at some places. After a long period of time, they are cemented together to form these rocks. Example, sandstone, shale, and clay. And chemical sedimentary rocks are formed by precipitating of minerals from water. Usually they are found in the beds of reservoirs. It is formed usually through evaporation of chemical rich solutions. These rocks are also called as evaporate. And the best example for this chemical sedimentary rock is rock salt. And these are all the examples. Limestone, chert, sandstone, shale, and conglomerate. Actually, what is conglomerate is when the pebbles are cemented together, these rocks are called as conglomerate rocks. The next one is the final one, metamorphic rocks. The word metamorphic, we have heard of the metamorphosis of a frog, butterfly, isn't it? The different stages they have passed. The word metamorphic is derived from the two Greek words, meta and marfa. Meta means change and marfa means shape. When igneous and sedimentary rocks subject to high temperature and pressure, the original rocks get altered to form a new kind of rock called as metamorphic. See here, these igneous rocks, when they are subjected to weathering, they become sedimentary rocks. And again, when they are subjected to high pressure and temperature and cementation, metamorphic rocks are formed. There are two types, thermal metamorphism and dynamic. If the change in the rocks is mainly caused by high temperature, the process is called thermal metamorphism. If the change in the rock is caused by high pressure, then the process is called as dynamic metamorphism. Granite in Tunisia is caused by dynamic metamorphism. Basalt into green chest is caused by thermal metamorphism. See the granite, because of high pressure, it becomes nuisance. You can see that because of the pressure, the folding is there. Now rock cycle. What is rock cycle? Rock cycle is a continuous process through which igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks are transformed from one form to another. See, this is the igneous rock. When they are weathered and eroded, the sediments are formed. The sediments are pressed and cemented together to form sedimentary rocks. And these sedimentary rocks undergo tremendous heat and pressure to form metamorphic rocks. And these metamorphic rocks are melted due to tremendous heat in the mantle. And the melted rock forms magma, which cools and hardens to form igneous rock. So this is called as a rock cycle. Uses of rocks. Rocks are everywhere. They are inevitable in our life, isn't it? And you, we have so many uses, innumerable uses out of rocks, unimaginable. Bricks are made from rocks, and you can see in our house, many parts of our houses are made of rocks. You can see the countertops are made up of even the floorings, some pathways, even the lead in our pencil is made of a special rock called as graphite, and the gravels used in paving the roads are made of rocks and the ceramics and some jewelries. You have many, many, many uses of rocks. Thank you students. And in the next session, we will be studying about soil, which is 